Hello everyone, I'm George from Ireland. So here I'm in Holy Whale Cemetery in Oxford, United Kingdom. And I came here trying to find Ken Tynan's grave. There are a number of very distinguished people laid to rest here, mostly associated with the university. But I couldn't find Ken Tynan. There's no sign saying where it is. Must go and find a grave. But what I did find is very overgrown cemetery. Um, just by chance, I've forgotten who's buried here, is, is Kenneth Graham's headstone. So I, I'll feel myself touching it a little bit before I read the inscription. So that's it. That is as close to Kenneth Graham as I'm ever going to get. It's hard to believe that he's six feet below where I stand. You know, as I wish I could reach out and touch him, somehow commune with him, someone who brought me so much glee as a small child. Anyway, on the headstone it reads, To the beautiful memory of Kenneth Graham, husband of Elizabeth and father of Alistair, who passed away by the river on the 6th of July, 1932, leaving child of literature um, through him the more blessed for all time. And his son, Alistair, uh, a commoner of Christchurch, as an undergraduate of Christchurch, um, an Oxford college, he's buried here as well. Uh, because um, Kenneth Graham's life was tinged by tragedy when his son committed suicide at the age of 20, I think, on the railway line. But that was covered up at the time. It was too traumatic. It would have cast a pall over his reputation. Um, anyway, so Kenneth Graham, he's born in Edinburgh in 1859, the son of an advocate, as in equivalent of a barrister. So quite a well-to-do family. Um, well, uh, but they still didn't have quite the income for him to come to Oxford University. He didn't have the grey matter to win a scholarship, could have come here as an ordinary person. Uh, remember, this is a time when about 2% of people went to university, uh, oh, and or not to go to university at all. So he joined the Bank of England and worked his way up there. He found it tedious, so he wrote stories as part of escapism. Uh, it's a well-worn path by a number of um, the celebrated uh, writers of that uh, era in British literature. Anyway, he subsequently got married, he had only one child, but he's best known for his uh, 1908 magnum opus, which is Wind in the Willows, which uh, feasts a, a um, uh, cast of clothed beasts, uh, as in they are animals, but they wear clothes and they behave like humans, they can speak and all the rest of it. Um, so, uh, and this is obviously um, 